Okay, so, um, okay, I actually started on this. So this is the month, the, diff, the, month, the, the, um, the form. All of the, um, oh, slide show. Okay, be patient while I actually get this mouse over to the corner. The mouse is really difficult. The mouse is like, so. whoa. Yeah, it's like 1993. Yeah, okay. So if you go to the Bioconductor YouTube channel and just like Google YouTube Bioconductor, you'll find the Bioconductor YouTube channel. And if you click on playlists there, you'll see the developers form is the second playlist that's, this, that, that's actually there. I would actually go and do a live click to this, but I don't know if this is wise with this mouse. Um, and that basically has like these monthly meetings. Also, if you go to the Bioconductor calendar on the events and you can subscribe to this, it's a Google calendar. So just subscribe is the easiest way and then it just pops up. We never, remember, or at least I never remember to go to the website and check it. I just have it. I just subscribed to it. Basically, it's, um, I think it's the, the second Thursday of every month, isn't it? Um, and at the moment, Mike Smith is the guy who organizes that, and he would very much appreciate if somebody else wanted to help organizing the developers forum meeting. So um, it's a great opportunity for people who've recently developed packages or anybody just to talk maybe about problems that they're having, things that they found useful. Um, it's an open kind of discussion forum for developers. Okay, so other things that are available. So we recognize kind of that the developer section of the website is maybe not the easiest to um, develop. So we're redeveloping that. And this is very much work with Kevin, who should be on the online call. Um, Kevin, are you online? I am here. I see my stuff. So I don't know if people can see me. But yeah, I mean, we can see you now. Cool. I, so I try to. Okay. So Kevin, Go ahead. so Kevin basically uh, created this um, contributions to bioconductor.org, which is much, I really do want to kind of show it, which is much more, yes, it is working, which is much more extensive. Um, and hopefully, you know, you can go to the GitHub, you can edit this page, you can find out something that you think would be useful to, to um, have there. Please suggest edits to this as well. But this is hopefully going to be a better landing spot for new developers. Um, we're also using this within the mentorship program. Um, and we hopefully have more information there for developers and questions that they may be having. Um, so hopefully this will kind of take over from that. Um, the, the, the other sites are, are, are support to them at least. The developer forum I mentioned, I'm going to mention the mentor program in a second. Hey, so um, the, oops, the um, mentorship program is something that we just started this year. We're literally like Kelly is one of the mentors on the program. Um, Nitesh and Marcel, who are also here at the meeting, are other mentors on that program. I um, know, oh, Marcel is, I'm sorry, Nitesh is. Um, and it, the idea is that we pair new people who basically have something on GitHub but want to get it into Bioconductor, and we pair them with somebody who's experienced. And anybody can apply to be a mentor. The criteria we kind of used was you had to have two packages in Bioconductor. So somebody who, who had experience of getting packages in. Um, and then the mentees um, apply to join the program. We did review kind of the code that mentees had on GitHub. If it was really not at all in anything remotely resembling R, if it was a complete mix of languages all over the place, we kind of pointed them to maybe start here. You're, you're not really ready to start beginning to put something into Bioconductor. Um, but as long as it looked like it was maybe had the semblance of becoming coming like an R package, we accepted them into the program. And then the, do you want to talk about that actually is how you've been finding it? Yeah, yeah. I think this program has been really great, actually. Um, so we I, we didn't have that many, maybe like a dozen uh, people signed up to be uh, mentees. And then all of us sort of went through and looked at the different projects and basically said like, yeah, I think this one's a 
potential for the pro program. This one's maybe not quite there yet, like you said. Um, and it's been, I think, really great for from the mentee aspect because you know they get personalized attention, they get all their questions answered, and just having you know seeing the progress over the course of the few meetings that we've had with them, I think it's been really helpful. So I'm a big fan. Yeah, and so this is like we're just trying. This is the first time, and so we're hoping that our mentees can get packages into the October cycle, and then the plan would be to kind of really like meet with everybody, learn from this first cycle, and hopefully begin another cycle in probably September. Kevin, to probably do um, a call for people then to start with for the. For I the think April that was release. open for discussion, really. Uh, yeah. I was looking at the, um, so we do have an open form. I'm going to dig up the link again now, but uh, so there's a, a rolling call for new mentees. And so I can see five of them at the moment. So we're sort of balancing uh, the number of mentors and mentees, always welcoming people who are willing to give their time. But yeah, so we haven't settled on a date yet for, uh, for the next role, but I think that's going to be a next discussion point and as soon as new mentors become available i guess that's the, one of the limiting factors at the moment yeah so so if people want to yes uh, i was just uh wondering if you could just remind how the mentees are where where how you let mentees know or you know anyone uh how you let them know if they, if they can apply to be a mentee because it wasn't clear to me like how mentees can so we have a google form um, I can put the links on this. It's it's on the um, the website. Do I have the link here to the website? That would be it. It's also oops. Uh, do I have the link to the website? That's a really useful thing if I had it. Um, nope. I'm looking at all the other pages here, and I'm going the wrong way around things. Um, no, I don't have a link to the. If I go to Kind of the front by a conductor website page here okay and we go into the developer section it's actually linked from here okay get me there quicker please <laughs> yeah. i think i i mean if you're looking for the yeah, application new, new for developers program that's yeah. it here. okay yeah. Oh, yeah and so on the new developer program here um we actually have join as a mentor join as a mentee and we've got two google forms there and um we just basically we have announced um, on the support site and on twitter when these have been opened at the moment the mentees is on a rolling form we probably should have the mentors on a rolling form as well but we kind of did we did a call we've reviewed the applicants to the mentorship program and then we closed it but maybe we should reopen that again soon yeah. to get the next set of mentors in and but i think we also want to probably have a meeting first and just learn from everything and the experience and yeah. and the existing mentors i think are really going to guide us and how we move forward with that oh is the program strictly for just all packages or like is that interest in expanding it to other developers like for example like tutorial on how to use cloud resources something like that oh i hadn't thought about that like literally we were just thinking of getting packages from github into bioconductor and that was the focus of this but that i think would be you know i can see using cloud resources is something that a lot of people have a lot of questions about so that may well be i don't know if that's something that would be better, better on the developers forum or but maybe then mentorship for that might actually be a good i don't know what do people think vince what do you think I like the idea, yeah. but, um, you know, this is a, a feature of the project that I, I think has always been very important, but does not get tremendous publicity as an educational project as, as well as a software repository. So, you know, writing papers about the scope of it, understanding from the mentorship process, which I assume includes a lot of recording of changes in GitHub repositories, right? We can start to learn about the patterns uh, that people got themselves into and then got themselves out of by being mentored. I think there's a lot of scope for um, <clears throat> developing data and metrics 
that would ultimately lead to a more efficient path into the system for anybody who wants to get in there. And what Alex is proposing, I think, is, is going outside of that. We're not talking about packages anymore. We may be talking about a strategy of using data resources that would ultimately help packages, or we may be thinking about something which orchestrates yeah. multiple packages in a workflow in a way that's good when we are using the cloud or an electronic computing. I, yeah. I, 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 do, I do think that there's like, you know, if, for, for people like, my, like myself, the dummy's guide to the cloud would yeah. actually be, you know, and getting it up and started and by a conductor. Even though I've attended lots of these workshops, I, you know, I still, you know, go, I'm a bit hesitant on stuff. So I do think it would be a really, really great thing to do and to have, yeah. And at different levels of where to come in at that. Yeah. 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 I would volunteer to do that. And also even like for the mentorship program, something like you have a package, but you want to do something to be able to scale it to the cloud. Like, so that you can add some cloud scaling in your package, something like that, that mm -hmm. might be more related to packages, but still needing some cloud infrastructure. Yeah, that's that's a great. I, I, I let, let's. Um, it would certainly be a good topic for a talk on the developers forum. It would be a fantastic discussion on the developers forum, I think, as well. So yeah, so there's multiple places where I think we can take that idea forward. Um. So any other questions on the developer program? Okay. Is there a thought about how this connects to the carpentries? So most of the carpentries at the moment are very much geared at brand new beginners. So, you know, it's kind of the introduction to our an introduction to our and seek is like a two day course. So that's very much aimed at people who are starting from an Excel spreadsheet and working into how to get that into R and how to do very basics. Um, so I think, whereas we could develop some of this into the carpentries at the moment, I think maybe it's better to let the carpentries be for beginners initially, and then we will probably expand that out as we get more instructors and more people involved. Um, all the other things I wanted to mention. Okay. So that's that. Um, so the other ways, like, and I think this your suggestion of that the cloud base would be a perfect new working group as well. You know, I think get yourself and then other people who want to basically have a cloud and bioconductor working group would be brilliant suggestion because then you can think of various different ways um, and get other people on board to help you as well. Because sometimes we all have these great ideas and then we realize we run out of time. So if you can get more people to help you, it's always good. Um, two things that Laurie is doing at the moment is like package review. So if you're kind of a developer and sometimes it's good to learn from other people's mistakes. So if you're reviewing somebody else's code, you sometimes can learn about your own coding, whether, you know, good things and bad things. So like, you know, for people who've developed already and have that kind of experience, joining the, the package review or the package triage groups are good ways to be involved. And this, these slides were presented as part of the CAB, like what the package review and the triage is as well. I thought I had one other slide there. Okay. Um, and then I just wanted to mention, I just want to open this to the forum to everybody in a second, but we have like, there's multiple kind of Slack channels. Does everybody know where the Slack is? Anybody who doesn't, who isn't on Slack or who doesn't know about the developer Slack? Okay. And um, it seems like everybody does. Yeah. Um, so the channels, there's developer mentorship, which is the mentorship program. Sorry, there's somebody online. Sorry, uh, yeah, I just raised the hand. I was about to say, I literally just posted in my last message in the chat, the link to the Bioconductor Slack. So if oh. people wonder about it, it's on the Bioconductor main page, but I, uh, out of a different conversation, I just posted the link. Brilliant. Thanks, Kevin. Um, no and on the Slack, there's a couple of different channels. So one is the developer mentorship. So if you've got any questions about the developer mentorship program and you want to be a mentor or a mentee, that's a really good place to ask those questions. The developers forum, which is the monthly um, Zoom, one hour Zoom basically on, on the topics related that might be of interest to developers. Um, other places which would be great to see more developers um, be involved is on two diversity and inclusion channels. One is Diverse BioC, 
um, and the other is accessible vis. So that's basically how do we make you know everything that we're doing accessible to most people. So um, it was started by a couple of people that were actually colorblind and wanted to make sure, particularly with single cell, where there's all these U maps which are completely unintelligible because it's all by color for so many people. Um, and I just put in the Slack or the, sorry, the email address for the community advisory board there, which is another way to try and just contact a lot of us that are on this. Um, but I kind of just want to open this up to find out what do what do people need? What do developers want? What do you want to contribute as much as what you want to need, what you feel like you need? So just I would I'd just like to put in a plug for the mentorship program. If you're thinking about becoming a mentor, like I would say absolutely do it. We were very worried at the beginning of the program about sort of how much of a time commitment it would be. And honestly, it's been very tight. It's been very easy. Had maybe uh, six meetings or so over the course of like three months with one of my mentees who's now like her package is ready to go, ready to submit. Um, the other one has been a little bit more drawn out, but the meetings have been more sparse and they're still ongoing. So it's it's adaptive to what the, the mentee needs, but it really, it's just been like a one hour meeting, no more than like every other week, pretty light time commitment. And I think it's really great to, to have that sort of thing in place because um, at least for me, I was very lucky. I had a postdoc when I was a grad student who had made bioconductor packages before and sort of knew the tips and tricks. And so being able to provide that for other people is just very, rewarding and and like pretty simple once you've done it at once and you sort of know how the process works. Anybody online want to, to, to come in with comments, questions, suggestions? What do you think would really have helped you most in kind of your journey from user to developer. So I'll just talk for my, like, so I know that you were mentioning hackathons, um, bioconductor hackathons. And I think that that might be something like, you know, interesting, like where people can learn how to develop an R package that like we actually, our packet, like by package basically is a product of our labs hack hackathon where None of us basically knew how to develop an R package, but but Nathan Nathan like taught us like all of the like rules, what it needs. And I think that it was just a nice kind of like practical experience when you kind of like dive into it and, and you learn on the run. Mm -hmm. So like it it's just, you know, a suggestion like what what could be like potentially like like a teaching experience for people who might be, who might be like into this. And what do you think works best in that hackathon situation? What makes it successful to a failure in a hackathon? You just, it's just, you, you definitely have to have someone like organized there. Like you have to be like, you know, it, it has to have a structure. It's not like, oh, let's do a program and uh, let's, let's do like a program and um we'll see how it goes and and let's all brainstorm like no it has to be definitely like structured like you will take care of this you'll take care of this but as the people are coming together you're kind of like learning what like individual people are are still doing it has to be interconnected but i think that it, it it's still pretty scary i think i find i i find hackathons incredibly scary like I always get there and I have no idea what to do ever but but like this experience kind of like helped me maybe just like smaller groups with someone like who is kind of like leading it but and maybe just have a session kind of like at the beginning just about the organization of the of the like you know our package like when I started in our package, I had no idea even like how the files are organized within it. And, and, you know, just kind of instead of doing a workshop, it, it would be basically something like, you know, developers workshop with a potential of an end product, actually, that you're not just learning, but you're motivated by by creating something. And I think that that's just it just kind of motivates you more. Here's a thought. To do that. Yeah. 
Um, I, I think the hackathon idea is, is a very welcome one. One of the things I would like to watch out for is the notion that uh, I'm a going to develop a package, I'm going to submit it, it'll be admitted, and then I'm done. And then I'm done, yeah. <laughs> and so one place to put a hackathon is on existing packages, because none of yeah. them are perfect. Mm -hmm. Many of them can be improved in many ways. Uh, documentation, for example, how do you add documentation? How do you verify and make sure that it is aesthetically attractive and so on? Those are things that many people don't know how to do. And so one could do something that is not as hard as a de novo package, uh, but is an incremental improvement to many of the packages that already exist. It's a possible framework for a, even a multi-package hackathon where you could learn about different features of keeping packages going and be a member of the community that is improving the whole ecosystem rather than one contributing one package. We did try to do that once with the IOC chat, and maybe it's time to do another one again. Because we tried to do one like that uh, for life for the yeah. IOC chat. It's where funny. most of our Marcel's and mine's lists. Yeah. Still <laughs> and, yeah. and I and I do think that that's actually great. That it, like in the end, this is how our hackathon, like the lab hackathon, was. There was already a package, but yeah, it just needed to go further. And and I think that like yeah, once you have something, like creating our package, like from you know from scratch, it's not that hard. It's just like a few comments, right? But but like yeah, then knowing actually really how to organize it and how it should be done and like. You know, like what to avoid that, like there was the learning experience. So, so yeah, that 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 is a. There's one good more point. thought um, about a, a learning experience, which is fixing something that's truly broken, and you may deliberately break something and have somebody fix it, and learn how to use the debugger, and so forth. These are things which uh, are essential to development, but many people do not really get into debugging profiling and making things go faster and so forth. So there's a, a series of topics that we should probably organize somewhere mm -hmm. um, that, you know, we can just work on to improve our, uh, you know, the, the, the on-ramp for those who are going to develop and become experts because that's what we really need. Yeah. So who wants to, anybody who is interested in taking this on? Because <laughs> that's my, like, my old, anybody who knows me, I'm very much on let's actually plan something out of this rather than come up with the wish list in the cloud. Would yeah, anybody like to work with that, us? Pete, to, I, you're taking notes on that. I, I think you can work on it. Yeah, is there anybody else who'd like to work on this or who would actually be kind of keen to... To, to do something like maybe do some sort of a hackathon of taking a package you like that you know needs to be improved or anybody who wants to volunteer their package to be the guinea pig. I think the volunteering package is like, you know, advertise it is your package broken, like we can like well, let's fix it and you know, then you can be a contributor, like you can have a name on a paper when it comes out, you know. But yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm not offering it at this yeah. point. <laughs> 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 okay, so we. I think I think I can volunteer any package I've worked on as like you know something that needs help. <laughs> yeah, I'll volunteer a package definitely. <laughs> well, maybe we need the the you know the package hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and we can a little triage process. <laughs> what? A little triage process. Well, there's some packages I think Laurie could probably be able to identify that are close to triage, but are that there are actually very popular and maybe they're more important than other packages to get done. Yeah, probably. And that was kind of like the idea of the package triage group too, is that not, I mean, you can get, like for me, I don't have time. My email is normally your package is broken on Bioconductor and you've been ignoring the automatic <laughs> notifications for too long. Um, <laughs> and like I said, I'm a bad new bears. Bioconductor. But I also <laughs> don't have time to like really get into why the error is occurring. I can point you to the build system of what the error is, where if people are more interested in getting involved, even something like that, of um, doing a little bug report for packages that they know are failing that are of interest, and just either putting pull request in for those packages or um, at least giving them a more informative like error message or or that they can pinpoint why it's occurring more, um, because sometimes that's half the battle. Okay. Again, not necessarily a requirement to be on the package trio. You could just send your email and be done. But <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so maybe we send an email or some sort of a, a list out so people can say that their package needs to go under a package rescue. <laughs> I can call it. We call it package rescue or package hospital. <laughs> I like hospital. Package hospital. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're going to start up a package hospital. <laughs> <laughs> where we can have a, we could use Nathan's group um, hackathon format to actually then try and rescue them and people can volunteer <laughs> for that okay I know we're over time here and there's a lot of other exciting things on the plat on the the um, schedule so I won't keep people but we've come up with a couple of very concrete ideas basically the cloud-based um, which I think is great that we go ahead with that and basically also the package hospital so and, and hackathons on package hospitals. I think those are really great ideas. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody online. If there's any other ideas you have, please continue the, the discussion on Slack.